It is April 1st. Thank goodness March is over and hopefully we're on a new path to a, a new and better country. Um, today we just got a couple things we're going to be showing you. Number one, this is our little sneak peek of the black that dropped today for our 2020 quilt. So any of you that are doing that, this pattern will be up there today. There's also a few support documents with it. One, a little explanation of how to set a square on point and then the chart for cutting your corner triangles for different size center squares. So those are all up on the on the 2020 page right now. Um, the second thing on today's Daily Dose page, we're going to be giving you another free pattern for a fun little project. It's really good to work with panels. Um, it can be used with memory quilts, t-shirts, and different types of fabrics, or it can just be used from your stash. The nice thing about this project, here's our little sample. It's taking different size blocks and kind of turning them a little bit at an angle, kind of cocking them off to the side, to the left or to the right. So when you're working with panels, a lot of times they're not straight. You can't square them up. So this is an easy way not to have to worry about that. Um, when you're working with memory type quilts, you have fabrics that are all different sizes, shapes, colors. So you can kind of take multiple things and create them into one block that is then consistent okay and this is just the one little page that is going to be posted to the daily dose sometime this morning so a quick tutorial on how to do the blocks um, you can start with any size square rectangle big or small And we're going to be working with six inch strips that we surround these pieces of fabric with. So in the sample that we showed you, I had a panel. Here I'm just using a piece of fabric. So all my center blocks are going to be the same fabric, but of various sizes. So the first thing we're going to do is from your background fabric, you're going to cut a whole bunch of six inch strips. And then we need to surround the block with a piece on each side. So I start by just cutting two pieces. I tend to cut them a little bit bigger. If you want to cut them the exact size, you can. I tend to just cut them an inch or so bigger. Sew it on the two opposing sides. And then I'm just going to take and trim it off even. So once I've done this with all of my blocks, I have my surrounding fabric on the top and bottom or side to side. Then I need to take another piece, the same six inch width, and I'm going to sew it on either side. Okay. This strip is longer than I need. This one's actually a little bit shorter. It's not going to go the entire length, but that's okay. We don't really need it to be the full length, and I'll show you a minute as we square them up. So I would just sew these two pieces onto each side. So here I have my piece that's been surrounded. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 15 inch square. Some of you may have bigger squares, some of you may have smaller squares. The 15 inch works really nice with this project. If you don't have a square this size and you don't have availability to one, you can always just cut a template out of template plastic or something like that to go around. So I'm going to lay my square on my block. And then in order to get that crookedness to my block, I'm going to take and I'm going to spin my square. Okay. And I just have to make sure that all four corners of my square are still on my border fabric. And then I'm going to cut around, all the way around, my square. All 
I love these Alex Anderson rotary cutters because you can easily switch from cutting with your right hand and then I can switch to my left hand. All I got to do is push the button in and tap it and now it's a left-handed uh, rotary cutter. So for anybody who can cut with both hands, it's a great blade or a great cutter. Okay, so here's my block that is now going to be kind of crooked within the square of my background. So here's another one where my side borders were shorter than what I needed. It didn't come all the way to the length. Again, it really doesn't matter because as long as I just make sure that my ruler is totally on all of my black or my border fabrics, it doesn't matter if they're a little bit shy on your ends. All right, so there's our third block. This one I'm not going to take the time to square up, but I just want to show you that with this pattern and this size square, I really don't want my center piece to be much smaller than six inches because my six and my six and my six are going to give me without my or after seam allowance is about 17 inches. So if I go much smaller than that, I really don't have a whole lot of room to tilt my ruler to get that kind of cattywampus look to it and also remember to tilt your ruler sometimes to the left sometimes to the right okay so once you get all your blocks squared up so here's our three blocks and then again if you know us you know that we can't ever just do anything one way we always have to give you lots of options it's our our good point and our bad point so the pattern basically talks about sewing these together with a little sashing strip to divide your two pieces, okay? So that's one option, is just putting your blocks together. Our pattern was done with nine blocks, so it was just sewing three together, putting the sashing, sashing strip, and doing three rows. But there's lots of other things you can do, okay? In the sample that we showed you in the beginning with the Grinch fabric, we sewed our blocks together without the sashing. And this gives you a nice big kind of solid area to work with for doing different decorative things. Again, on here, when Elaine made this one, she used some rickrack and she just ran it down all of the seams after the top was sewn together. She actually used that as part of her quilting and then we put in a variegated thread and just did some squiggle lines all over it because it's a, gr a Grinch quilt, so you can do that. Some of the other things you can do is if you've gotten the Wesley rulers and the quilting foot, this is a great area to play with some of those rulers to, you know, maybe practice your feathers or circles or different things like that. Um, Elaine also talked yesterday about bias tape. So this is a great place where I could just take, instead of what she used, the Rick Rack, you could just take different bias tape, kind of make it kind of fun. You can have big ones, little ones, put them at different angles. Okay. This one, I cut it on the bias. These two I cut straight of grain, so they're a little bit tougher to, to curve. This one, I don't know if you can see when I pull it, it really stretches. So then this one I would be able to do a little bit more curves with as I sew it down because I can stretch that curve. Okay. Another thing you can do if you want to get a little bit of a, of a V-shape going on, if you take this strip and you fold it the same way we do when we go around our corners when we're binding, so I'm going to fold it back, and then I'm going to fold it straight up. So it's going to give me that nice 90 degree corner. Then I can set it right on here, 
Maybe use a couple pans or a couple drops of Roxanne glue to hold it all in place. So that would give me almost a little bit of a chevron look that then I can just stitch down on these sides. Okay. The other thing is you don't have to use all the same color around your background. So here, if I wanted to use this Christmas fabric, I could use red. So say I had a small square here. I could put green on two sides, right? Trim them off, put red on two sides. So that's gonna give me more of a scrappy background look. I could surround this one square with all green and the next square with all red. So when I put them together, I get a little more of that patchwork look back and forth. I could have each side be a different color. If you think about it, a fat quarter, you can cut into three six inch strips. So again, dig through that stash, find those fat quarters, chop them up. You can have your center block be all the same fabric. It can be a panel or your center blocks can all be different fabrics also, okay? So that's just a couple ideas of things you can do with a really fun, quick little pattern. We hope you enjoyed this. We will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, everybody.